Most people know Special Olympics Minnesota for our sports programs. Third place for the road runners. But also we offer our initiative programs, a variety of programs for our athletes. But one of my favorite is our athlete leadership programs. We offer six different trainings for our athletes. There's athletes as volunteers. We put our athletes on hands-on scenarios where they get to experience what it's like to be a volunteer at a Special Olympics event. There's athletes as coaches. We train in our athletes to coach their peers because they've gone through it firsthand. There's Global Messenger. Heidi, anytime you're ready. It's nurturing and safe environment for them to work on presentation skills and for them to identify what Special Olympics means to them and what it can mean to other individuals. Keep on trying my best in all parts of my life and that's a good life lesson for all of us. There's Graduate Global Messenger where we really start incorporating more of that personal interest for that athlete. I hope you're ready to hear my speech. It's going to be a funny one. <laughs> we also make sure that the athletes have a great foundation of support. There's governance. It's training for our athletes to serve on boards of directors and local committees. There's challenge through choices. It's a focus on building trust and taking safe risks. Someone that has taken advantage of our athlete leadership programs and really taken it to the next level is Danielle Liebel. Danielle went through athletes as coaches. She also went through athletes as volunteers, and she also went through Global Messenger training. Hi, I'm Danielle Liebel. I'm on the Special Olympics Youth Activation Committee, and I'm also on the Special Olympics Minnesota Board of Directors. Um, I'm a first year at St. Ben's, and I'm majoring in Peace Studies and Theology. Athlete Leadership Program focuses on making sure our athletes know they have a voice. Once they realize they have that voice, they go back to their hometown and back to their community and they really are interested in making the world a better place. Believe it or not, Danielle used to be very, very shy. <laughs> she never used to be extremely talkative. Without Special Olympics, Danielle would be probably nowhere near the person she is. It really did bring her out of her shell. At least that's what I think. And. Um, I don't know, there's no looking back. She just, you can't look back. She's, you can't hardly keep up with her, period. I was a 15 year old Special Olympics athlete, and that's about it. I was a middle schooler. I didn't really public speak at all. I was afraid of it, like most people are. But I've learned valuable lessons, such as good sportsmanship acceptance of my abilities and pride, finishing the race no matter what place I get. When she got into her leadership programs and started doing speeches and all that kind of stuff, she just, it just accelerated. It was just crazy. It's what you dream of. <laughs> um, it's really what you want for your child. To watch her gain that independence through Special Olympics has been um, it's been a gift for us, actually. It's actually what we've been dreaming of. Keep going, Cody. The goal is simple. Empower youth to replace cruel words with respectful speech. She spent a lot of time really challenging the kids to stop the use of the R word. And Gandhi once said, no one can hurt me without my permission. Throughout middle and high school, I have been bullied numerous times. It's made an impact that she could see in her local school because she could see going down the hall where kids would say, we're not supposed to use that word anymore. You know, that, that's a word that's offensive to others. It's incredible. She really has left her mark on that community. With a movement focused on giving you the voice, challenging them to think differently, and empowering them to be the difference in society. So please help me welcome my friend, Aaron Christopher. Aaron Christopher presented with Teen Truth Live and it was extremely wonderful presentation. And each year she just strives to make it bigger and better than the year before and touch more people and done a really fine job with that. That word can change someone's life forever. It's 
spreading like wildfire. Um, we started with just a couple hundred college campuses and a few high schools um, the first year. And then now we're all over the country. We're in China. Stay involved with people with intellectual disability. I have a challenge for you guys. There's someone following in Danielle's steps. Now that Danielle has graduated high school, it's still an issue to end the word. So one of Danielle's classmates said, well, I can give this a try. Let's accept people for who they are, not what they wear, how they look, or how high of an IQ they have. If we remove the outer shell, it's a lot easier to realize that we are all human beings. I was born in a body that doesn't work the way it's supposed to all the time. The truth is, I'm a human being that often feels isolated, alone, and extremely different because of how I'm treated. I believe that if we work together to be the difference, we can make our school a safe, connected, amazing place to be. By a show of hands, he's willing to end the use of the R word in this school. my hope that any athlete interested in athlete leadership programs will look at Danielle and see her as an inspiration. Danielle did not start off confident, but through athlete leadership programs we showed her how to use her voice, we showed her how to believe in herself and get out there and talk about what's important to her. Any athlete can do that, just that they need to take that opportunity.